Hello everyone, welcome back to the ESL Server tutorial. In this episode, we're going to manage the ESLs, or rather we're going to do the basic functions that you'll use most often. In the previous tutorial, we already installed the ESL server and we've connected to a base station. So let's get right to it. I'm connected to a base station. It has 11 ESLs on board. So if I go to the ESLs tab, I can see all of the ESLs connected to this station. And as you can see in the description, they're saying the label isn't linked. We want to link it to products. Products that are in the product database, which we featured in the database episode. As you can see here, the links table is completely empty. The links table is a link between the uh, MAC address of the ESL. The, each ESL has a unique hardware address, the MAC address. And in the product database, we've assigned a field called product idea ID as the uh, main unique ID for that database. And a link between a unique MAC address and a unique product ID is what makes the ESLs and the database information sync. So, let's take one of our ESLs. The one on the desk here is called B2C000. 6F1. And if we see in the ESL server software, there is a label here. It's a EE750R. It's got this firmware version. Um, basically, all you need to know about ESLs are in these columns. And you can right click the column and add and close anything you want. Let's have a very quick overview. The unique ID is not applicable because that's the unique ID of the product that it can be linked to. The MAC address group, which isn't really important for this tutorial, so I'm going to turn it off. You can use groups, for instance, to group together certain types of products, such as vegetables, tobacco, and then have the ESLs respond to the group in a certain way, which is something that we're going to cover in templates and conditionals. Next to the MAC address, we have a description, which of course now says label is not linked. The poll interval, which is how often the ESL pulls the base station for new information. The battery status, one means the battery is okay, zero means battery is running low, you might want to change it. The variant, the firmware version, the image ID, each time you upload a new image to the ESL, the image ID increments, and that way the ESL and the ESL server keep track on the status of each ESL and the picture that it is showing. The LQI is a pretty important one too, especially when we go into the more advanced topics in a other ESL video. And the last poll, which is the last time that the ESL polled for information. Now, that's all well and good. Let's get to the actual linking of the products. Since linking is one of the most important features of the ESL server software, arguably the most important one, there are several ways you can do this. The first one is by clicking on an ESL, and then you get access to all of the uh, settings for that individual ESL. And we can say we want to link or relink it. Start that action. And then we see this screen pop up, which has the MAC address, the variant of our label. And then it asks us for the unique ID. You can press on the magnifying glass to access your database. So let's say we want to connect this one to tomato paste. The unique ID is selected, and when we press apply, you'll see that the description changes and there's a dark green box around it. That dark green box means that the image is queued and it's ready to be placed on the ESL. If you click on that line again, you'll see that the current image status is queued and it will look like this. 
Now, the moment that the ESL pulls for data from the base station, the base station will say, I have a new picture for you. And then the transfer of data will start wirelessly. And once the ESL has received each and every pixel for that image, it will then update its image and then tell the base station, I've updated my image. And when that point has happened, the ESL server will change the description's background color from this dark green that we have now to a light green. But we actually went to a yellow one, which means that there was a problem during the transfer. This can have several reasons. It could happen because there is a bad connection or there was interference. And when there is interference, some of the uh, packages might get dropped. When that happens, the ESL server will automatically try to do it again, but we can also force it by relinking it. And let me use this uh, situation to show you another way. Instead of choosing an action and pressing start, some of you might have already noticed there also is a button just said link to item, which is way easier. It shows the exact same box. We can apply the existing link and we'll tell the ESL server to try again. Then there is a third way that we can use. Let's choose a different label and a different product. If we just double click that row item, it will also pop up the link ESL box. We can say this one is connected to coffee, classic roast. We apply and this image is queued. And then there is a last way or rather a last way within the software because I'll be showing you an awesome little feature in a second. If you go to the data tab, you can see that while we were linking, the links table has filled up with a couple of uh, links. And we have the same information, the unique ID of the product, the unique MAC address of the ESL, and the variant type of that ESL. We can click add to add a new one. Here we also need to choose which ESL we want to link it to. So let's choose yet another one and let's choose a different size. For instance, this 2.9 inch. We click unique ID, we link it to shampoo, we apply it and it pops up in the link screen. Now you might notice that this box doesn't automatically close. This allows you to quickly uh, and in sequential add new links. If you want to link several products to the same uh, type of item, you can also select a range, link those. It will show you a warning that you're going to link to the same item over several ESLs. We'll say yes, we are sure we want to do that. We link it to pineapples on juice. And all three labels are now queued for that new image. As you can see, these two have now reported back to the ESL server that they have updated their image. Well, they're right behind me, so let me check. Here we go. That one was 738. It should show the Folgers Classic Roast, and it did. And that is the basic way with which you link ESLs. Now in a second, I'm going to show you yet another way, but first let's go and do some more functions because since this one failed, there are also other actions that we can perform. We can also say resend the image because sometimes the image does arrive and the ESL reports, yeah, all of the packages were intact, but you might have pixel corruption. When that happens, you can instruct the ESL to resend the image. And now when the ESL pulls, the base station says, yeah, I've got a new 
pictures for you and it will upload it to the device. Now, if you unlink a, uh, a ESL, you can once again double click and press unlink, or you can choose an ESL and perform the unlink action. And then the labels are unlinked. When you do that, by default, the ESL will still show the old image. Ah, and in the meantime, the ESL server has updated the tomato paste image to the ESL that was uncooperative just a second ago. We only said resend image and there it went. Now we've unlinked two other ESLs, but by default, they will still show the picture they last had. Because if an ESL is out of range of a base station, it doesn't know if there are new instructions or not. And you can tell ESLs to go to a default image if they're no longer linked. And if they can't connect the data to a database or a base station, they just immediately assume I'm unlinked and they go to a default image. That's usually unwanted behavior. But now we have a product on this label. What if we want to turn it back to the original default image? Once again, you click on the ESL, you select the action, show default image, you press start, and the next time the ESL pulls the ESL server, it will be asked to uh, change its image back to the default that it had before being linked. And as you can see, there we go. It's pretty fast. And now the border is coloring in red. And now this ESL is back on a default state and can be used for other products. Now, some of you might be watching and thinking, do I have to link each and every single episode one at a time? Well, no. And this is a neat little feature that I saved for last in this tutorial about the basics of ESL management, you can use the ESL web app. During the installation portion of this tutorial, I uh, installed the ESL server web application as well as ZAMP. And when we go to our browser and we go to the local host on port 8015, it will show the ESL server web application. And here we can link ESLs. And as you can see, it says scan ESL and product. Because the neat thing about the web application is Apache is hosting it to everyone in the network. So I can take one of our Opticon scanners, in this case, an H28. I can turn it on. I can go to the browser. And in the browser, I have connected to the IP address of my PC, colon 8015, and I'm seeing the exact same screen that we were seeing on the browser on our other device, on our ESL server PC. So the web app is running on our handheld scanner. And that allows me to go to the same link ESL screen that we saw on the browser on the PC. And then I can take the product which has a barcode, I scan the barcode, I scan the ESL, and the device tells me that linking was successful. And then I can sequentially link each product to an ESL in no time. This way you can connect every single label in the store within a matter of minutes. And if we go back to the ESL server software on the PC, you can see that there are actually new labels waiting for their image. We linked it with the scanner. The ESL server uh, got the message to link and suddenly there's a whole bunch of links in this system. And the sneakers has already updated its image. And that's the basics of linking ESLs, showing the default image on ESLs, and resending images in the case of a connection failure. 
In the following episode, we'll go even deeper into the more advanced options of the ESLs and the management of these labels. Now, if you have any questions with regards to linking, unlinking the default images, feel free to contact us. There's a support link in the description. I would like to thank you for watching. Stick around for other tutorials. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.